Welcome to another living life and happy Sunday, everyone. I'm so glad that we were able to come together on the Lord's Day to be able to meditate on His Word, but also spend time in worship together. You know, a few years ago, uh, there was this well-known shoe company, and they introduced a very interesting business model. What they did was, uh, they, every time they sold a shoe, they promised that they would give another pair to a child in need. It was a very simple idea, but it caught on and it went all across this world. Uh, in a way, uh, the company, instead of wanting to maximize profits, uh, they tried to find a way to use what they had to help others. It was this buy one, give one model that they were able to create. Uh, now you see this model in very different areas, but I believe that the shoe company started this. Now, why is this important? In today's passage, Nehemiah challenges the leaders of Israel to restore fairness and unity within the community. But how does he do it? He encourages them, he rebukes them even, to take care of their fellow people. Uh, this act of generosity is not only necessary to mend relationships, but is actually necessary for the you know, survival of the community. And I pray that today, that as we receive this word, uh, let us be able to receive that same heart. You know, not because we have so much and we want to give, not, not even just that, uh, but to be able to want to give, want to help others, knowing uh, that our you know, lives are all intertwined and God calls us to be a community, not only in spirit of one, but at times to literally help them out, take care of their needs. I pray that as we read this passage together, especially on this Lord's Day, uh, that we will receive that spirit from God. With that, let's read the passage together. Nehemiah 5, 1 to 13. Now the men and their wives raised a great outcry against their fellow Jews. Some were saying, We and our sons and daughters are numerous. In order for us to eat and stay alive, we must get grain. Others were saying, We are mortgaging our fields, our vineyards, and our homes to get grain during the famine. Still others were saying, We have had to borrow money to pay the king's tax on our fields and vineyards. Although we are of the same flesh and blood as our fellow Jews, and though our children are as good as theirs, Yet we have to subject our sons and daughters to slavery. Some of our daughters have already been enslaved, but we are powerless because our fields and our vineyards belong to others. When I heard their outcry and these charges, I was very angry. I pondered them in my mind and then accused the nobles and officials. I told them, you are charging your own people interest so I called together a large meeting to deal with them and said, As far as possible, we have bought back our fellow Jews who are sold to the Gentiles. Now you are selling your own people only for them to be sold back to us. They kept quiet because they could find nothing to say. So I continued, What you are doing is not right. Shouldn't you walk in the fear of our God? to avoid the reproach of our Gentile enemies? I and my brothers and my men are also lending the people money and grain, but let us stop charging interest. Give back to them immediately their fields, vineyards, olive groves, and houses, and also the interest you are charging them, 1% of the money, grain, new wine, and olive oil. We will give it back, they said, and we will not demand anything more from them. We will do as you say. Then I summoned the priests and made the nobles and officials take an oath to do what they had promised. I also shook out the folds of my robe and said, In this way, may God shake out of their house and possessions anyone who does not keep this promise. So may such a person be shaken out and emptied. At this, the whole assembly said, Amen, and praised the Lord, and the people did as they had promised.
this chapter, it begins with a great outcry from the people. You know, many of the people were suffering. They didn't have enough food to feed their families. You know, others were mortgaging their fields, and even others had to sell their children into slavery to live. Uh, but this wasn't just an economic issue. This was a moral and spiritual crisis. And that's the point that Nehemiah and God is trying to tell us. You know, wealthier people were taking advantage of those who were in need. They were charging excessive interest because people needed to take it. They had no other options. And the very people who had a lot and they should have been working to rebuild the community were instead exploiting one another. This was injustice in the eyes of God. But before we start pointing too many fingers at only those people, right? In a way, these people had every right to. They had the means, right? Other people were willing, right? This wasn't by force. This was by situation. And yet still, this was injustice in the eyes of God and the community of God. In a way, the problem was there was no difference what was happening out in the world and also in the community of faith. You know, in a time of crisis, we are told to help and build one another instead of exploiting one another. Uh, but thankfully, God's heart is always attentive to the cries of those who are oppressed, the cries of his people. And that's what we see in today's passage. The people cry out, and God hears them, and God answers them. You know, especially in our world that we are right now, right, especially in 2024, it's very easy for us to be caught up in whatever is happening just inside of me or in my immediate family. You know, not all of us are well off, not all of us are able to give, and yet still we must remember God calls us to be a community and every member of this community uh, that should, right, that needs to care for one another. That's a call that every single one of us has. It's not just reserved for the rich. Uh, but what we need to also understand is we can take care of the needs of the people in different ways. It doesn't just have to be financial. It could be anything. Are you listening to the cries of those around you? Right? Begin with the people closest to you and then go into your faith community, but also expand out. Once you have a heart for it, I guarantee you, you will be able to hear the voices of those who are in need. And that is an opportunity for you to serve. That's an opportunity for you to fulfill the mission that God has given you. You know, there are people who are in need of comfort, peace. Maybe they need your time, right? They need your help with something or Perhaps they simply need a prayer. Whatever it may be, we are able to do it as long as our hearts are softened and open to hear it. You know, Nehemiah, in today's passage, he responds with righteous anger and action. In verse 6, he says, When I heard their outcry and these charges, I was very angry. And in verse 7, he says, I pondered them in my mind and then accused the nobles and officials. I told them, you are charging your own people interest. So I called together a large meeting to deal with them. You know, the reminder was just because you're a noble and official doesn't mean that God did not save you, right? It doesn't mean that we're not one community. Right? He just reminded them that God had redeemed all of them from slavery under foreign nations, and yet now these people were ostensibly enslaving their own people. You know, Matthew chapter 18, Jesus tells this story, right? It's a parable of a king uh, who wanted to settle uh, account with one of his servants. One of his servants owed the king just an exorbitant amount of money, you know, too much for it to ever be repaid. And the king ordered that the servant and his family be sold in order to take care of this debt, right? But the servant, he begged the king, you know, begged for mercy, promising all of these things. And the king, moved by compassion, uh, forgave him the entire debt, just a massive amount of debt. Uh, but as soon as this happened, after he was forgiven, the same servant went out and found the fellow servant who had owed him a smaller amount of money. But instead of showing the same mercy and compassion, instead he had the other servant enslaved and put into prison. Uh, when the king found out what happened, he was furious. He called the unforgiving servant back and he said, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that you, you know, owed me because you begged me. Shouldn't you have shown the same mercy to your fellow servant? I pray that those words, they ring in our ears today. We must always remember what we have already received. When we were debtors, when we were sinners, when we had our backs turned to God, Christ came to us where we were and found us, uh, absolved us of everything, showed us mercy and compassion, and because of that, our lives here today are transformed. 
Nehemiah didn't just rebuke the wealthy. He called them for immediate repentance and restoration. He urged them to give back the fields, back the vineyards, back the houses, whatever it was, and to stop charging interest. He was calling them to remember that they had already received so much from God, so it's on them to be able to you know, help others in that same way. I pray that we are able to do so. And thankfully, remarkably, the people listened, right? They said, we will do as you say. Uh, when we see here, what we see in today's passage, a heart of true repentance is not just a change of heart, but it's also action as well, right? It's to say, Lord, I will, you know, you have given me this heart, therefore I will live it out in my life. It's not just acknowledging that I have done wrong, but it's actually to be able to show this in my life and in my actions. I pray that in you know, the face of any injustice, in the face of anyone that might need help, even perhaps in our own hearts, uh, that we are able to turn around and be able to see God here today. And I pray that we are able to not only turn back to Him, but we're able to move in action as well. What is it that I can do to help those who are suffering? What is it that I can do to perhaps turn ways from different ways that I have been exploiting others? Whatever it may be, whatever God places in your heart, I pray that we are moved to action. I pray that everyone here remembers that as the body of Christ, uh, that we are meant to build a community of compassion and mercy. Uh, this does not mean just addressing the external challenges that we may be facing, but perhaps even the internal things that is harming our unity and witness. I pray that we are able to have the courage to confront the injustice, even perhaps look into our own hearts and be able to ask God and have God guide our hearts and our actions today. Let us be a people committed to true justice, God's justice. Let us be a church that listens to the cries of the oppressed and confronts wrongdoings with love and mercy. And I pray that we are able to seek to restore and rebuild lives in the same way that God restored us. I pray this over every single one of us here today. And with that, let's come together and let's pray. Lord, we Thank you and we love you so very much for giving us this word. And though it may be a hard word for us to be able to uh, listen to, we pray, Lord, that any amount of injustice, uh, even though it may be my fault, we pray, Lord, Father God, that you will wipe that away. Uh, use us, Lord, uh, to be your vessels of justice, to be your vessels of compassion and mercy. And let us not worry about how we can make more money or you know, gain an extra position, but instead, let us be willing to humble ourselves for the sake of those who are in need. And we pray, Lord Father God, if we have committed injustice, help us to repent and turn back, not only in our hearts, but in our actions as well. So we thank you, we worship you, we praise you, and we pray all this in Jesus' name.